welcome to the Long Shot Podcast, your favorite audio diary. I am one of your hosts, Amber Kenny, alongside your other host, Sean Conroy. Sean, how you Dear doing? diary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, we're recording on a Saturday afternoon, so it feels like any other day of the week. You know? Is it um, pre or post nap for you? It's pre-nap. Um, Sorry about so, that. No, no, no. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I only got up a few hours ago, you know, because uh, <laughs> at this point, sometimes my naps will be as late as like six or seven o'clock at night because okay. I'm up until four or five in the morning, you know, <sighs> it's not good. It's definitely not good. It's not a way to live, but especially because. Or maybe so- it is. Like, well, it would be fine if it was consistent, hmm. but because of some of the stuff I'm working on right now, I have to get up very early in the morning. So like fr- Thursday and Friday of this week, I, well, Wednesday and Thursday, no, Thursday. Okay. <laughs> point is I had to get up very early on both of those mornings and I had been like up very late back. the night before. Yeah. So I was up till five and had to get up at eight 30 to no, go into that's, meetings. That's basically not sleeping at all. It's bad. Yeah. And, uh, and then I have to get all jacked up on coffee, which means not being able to go right back to sleep. And, you know, I don't know. It's, I have to figure something out because it's just not working right now, you know? Um, and I think an easy thing to figure out would be, don't stay up till five o'clock in the morning every night. Uh, but easier said than done. You have to like sleep train yourself. You know how they sleep train babies? You have to like sleep train yourself. Right. What do they do? They they like go, no, 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 you sleep now. You sleep now. Here's a here's a here's a treat. I don't I roll honestly, over, play sleep. I don't know. I, I, I as I was saying it, I was like, I don't know what that entails. Yeah. Or if it's just like putting them to bed and and like not letting them get out. I don't know. Don't st- don't get out. Don't stay there. <laughs> the baby's like, I don't know how to get walk. Get down it's on a- your face. <laughs> it's not a problem. Or your back, whichever one you're supposed to, because right. one of them you're not supposed to. One of them's bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I'm post nap, so I'm feeling great. Oh, not to rub good. it in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I am not. Cause I definitely get to the point where I'm like, I must take a nap right now. Oh you yeah. Know? No, it's, I don't know how we can go back to like regular society. There's so many things like that. Like I take a nap every single lunch break, unless like something goes horribly awry and right. I have to like work through it, but I just like eat really quickly. And then I lay down for 20 minutes right. every day. And it's so civilized. But I don't know how I will function without that, to be right. quite honest. Right. And, and and because my schedule is so weird, for example, last night when I took a nap at, I don't know what time it was, 6.30, 7 o'clock right. and woke like up when at I was 8 o'clock or whatever. Yeah. to bed. <laughs> so then by 12.30, I'm like, I feel like going for a walk in the neighborhood for an hour. And then I come back and I'm like, I should eat dinner. It's 2.30, you know, like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, You're, you are walking the streets like Joe Wagner almost. Well, yes, I feel like I do it slightly differently, less, but yes, less prowly. Mm-hmm. I do less peeking into windows, and right. you know, can you hear me? I feel like I can't hear myself. I but... can hear you fine. Okay, okay, so maybe it's just the maybe output just... isn't the right. same as the endpoint. But I just wanted to make sure. Um, and, and I could be lying also. That's possible. Um, I just don't want to start sh- shouting. You know how, right. like, um, I love you guys, but I know they're probably going to listen. But when I talk to my parents on the phone, they, they it's like their volume goes like up, 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 up. Right, right. And I think it's like because I'm physically far away. Do they put you on <laughs> speakerphone when you call them? Yes, they do. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you the most egregious speakerphone situation Please. that I've encountered. I love and, speakerphone situations, particularly egregious ones. <laughs> and this one was just two days ago. Mm-hmm. So I called them um, and they answered and they're like, hey, and <laughs> great storytelling, Amber. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which one said that first and which went second? Um, but they said, you know, we're here with our friends um, 
our neighbors that are back in town and we're so excited to be with them and we're hanging out with them. And I forget the conversation went somewhere else. Thank goodness it was nothing. It all stayed surfacey, but basically it was revealed that I wasn't just on speakerphone with them. I was on speakerphone with like an entire party of people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh great, those assholes are back in town. Uh Amber, you're you're <laughs> right, on. right. Like, I don't know. It's just um that's like a I mean, I don't remember what season it was, but that's definitely an early episode of Larry David where he is in the car. I can't even remember what it is, but like somebody he is on speakerphone with Jeff puts him on speakerphone oh, yes. and, and Jeff's parents are in the car. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's a nightmare. I mean, it's a nightmare. Speakerphone is a nightmare in general, yeah. you know, although I will say I have just recently started if I'm here by myself in my apartment, I have recently started calling people on speakerphone, knowing and that I will be doing things sit. No, 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 not even that knowing that I'll just be sitting in my chair. So I don't have to be like, hunched over with my tiny cell phone up to my face, you know, that I know they'll be able to hear me because it's not like when I, (laughs) it just happened last week. I called my, my parents. First of all, the funniest thing to me is that I always call and they always want it to be on like FaceTime or Facebook live or TRL live or whatever the, you know, so you could see the people, you know, Ah. but the first thing, either of them does is place the phone directly between them. So you just see their shoulders. No, 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 no. Even (laughs) even better on its back on the table. So I'm like, Oh, your ceiling looks great. That light looks really good up, up above you. Um, Why do they do that? Because if it's laying that way, they can't even see you. Who the hell knows? I think they can. I think they're they're both. They Yes, oh. but it's just going up. Gotcha. Whatever. Um, and then the other thing is that, and I've I just figured this out that my mother's phone, she they both have iPhones, I think, but for whatever reason, it must be different models or something, because her mic clips way more than my father's microphone. So if I call on my mother's phone she will be so far away from the phone that she'll be like on Thursday because of that, you know? Right. Like, and I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> she doesn't like when I say that. Yeah, it's not a kind way to no. talk to your mother. Uh, but it's like, I catch half a sentence at best every time, you know? And it's not worth like for her, it is about like, I have a million other things I want to be doing besides talking to you on the phone. So it's not worth going. Can you just sit for a minute and talk instead of painting the fence and mending the fence and waxing on and waxing off, you know, all the things she's doing. (laughs) Well, going to be a karate kid. mm -hmm, Um, what do you do while you talk on the phone? I'm, I'm genuinely curious focus on the person i'm talking to are you sitting in a seat yes a lot of the time i have a seat that i sit in my i call it my phone seat and uh i sit in my phone seat to talk on the phone no i like to be comfortable sometimes if it's there's also phone calls that i am pacing back and forth around the apartment and in that case i am on the phone but i don't have i have another friend who i speak to fairly frequently who just the quality of his audio is so bad all the time. And it's because he's always on a Bluetooth Mm. doing something else while he's on the phone. And I just, I don't want to be that guy. It irritates me Mm -hmm. when somebody does that. And I'm like, Oh, good for you. Alphabetizing your records while we're on the phone. I'm glad you're able to type your novel while we're having a conversation about important subjects. I think that I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I, whatever who cares i'll bring it up again but w- one of the f- you know how much do we even have to talk about ever again <laughs> one of the funniest examples of that it it was like a family holiday call sometime in lockdown i i want to say it was like easter or christmas or thanksgiving something like that for jeff's side of the family and his uncle and cousins like an, a bunch of them were together fully playing like poker (laughs) so you know how zoom works where Mm -hmm. it it 
will only highlight the audio of the person talking and it almost m- mutes everyone else. Right. So people would be like mid telling a story or an update and it would cut out because like you could hear them like shuffling or like adjusting the chips. And it was just like, <laughs> What? Like, exactly to your point, like, just play that game in a half an hour. Like, what right, are we right. doing? <laughs> we don't have to be doing three things all the time. <laughs> we don't have to be multitasking all the time. But that said, I've found... I'm Teddy KGB. I'm on Zoom playing poker <laughs> and also spying for KGB. <laughs> um. I found that I can't just sit in a chair and talk on the phone. I've tried and um, that's, it's like I get more distracted. I'll, I don't know how to explain it. Right. Um, I don't know if that's like an ADHD. I, I, I don't know. On TikTok, everyone has ADHD according to TikTok, but, um, but I like walking. So I'll pace inside, but my preferred two places to talk on the phone are while driving, like, mm-hmm. So that's speakerphone, but, but it's like, I have an activity that I'm locked into, but I could also just focus on the conversation. You may hit somebody once in a while, but for the (laughs) most part. Well, like, I won't like, oh shit, I'm like scrolling the internet or something. Like, I'll like, no, no, no. Like, listen to the, um. Tijuana, I was going to Los Feliz. (laughs) Or walking. So I do a lot of walking around the neighborhood while talking Mm -hmm. on the phone and it took me way too long to adapt to this i feel like i'm the last person to do this but putting in earbuds to talk on the phone yeah exactly to your point i would like walk around like this and your face is like getting sweaty and your shoulder hurts and my face is already sweaty and my shoulder already hurts so it's just getting worse you know more 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 so um that it's like i have my limbs i'm I'm of the world, and I feel like the sound quality is even better. <laughs> I, I think that would be great if your tombstone said, <laughs> I had my limbs and I was of the world. It, like, that's a good. It sounds like bragging. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this she really thought about this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I don't really talk on the phone that much it's basically just my parents right it's kind of an old-fashioned thing to do like it's not you know it's just not done anymore um i do have certain people that i talk to fairly regularly on the phone but then a lot of other people i don't do that Mm. (laughs) i thought there'd be more of a twist (laughs) Sometimes it's just very right this happens, the but this does not happen. But sometimes it doesn't. Comedy is all about left turns, but sometimes conversation is just about going straight. Well, and also if you are expecting a left turn, I guess mm-hmm. going straight is a twist. Right. Well, we always like to start the show with checking in. So why don't we do that? Starting with Amber checking in. Checking in. Uh I, what do I want to talk about? I um, went, so I'm just going to brag on my friend, Tamara Brown, who is a friend of the show, has been on the show, Mm -hmm. um, member of Liquid Feet with me. Um, She's just really. Big fan of Tiki Bars. Big fan of Tiki Bars. She's just really cool in the sense that. I feel like it's really easy to talk about, like, we got to do something about things. Like, we got to fix homelessness or um, the environment and then just kind of watch TV and go to bed. Yeah. Um, but she and I, I'll, that's me. I'm calling myself out. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad you're calling yourself out because I felt like you were calling me out. So No, 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 no. Okay. Um, But I think that's most people is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, And she walks the walk. She's been volunteering for um, like homeless services places. Her full-time job up until very recently was um, helping in the homeless sector. And she also like canvases for candidates that she believes in that 
that she feels can make a change in Los Angeles. Like she just loves LA so much. Mm-hmm. And she, again, walks the walk. Like she, she, she puts her money where her mouth is and, um, and at least does things to try to make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and talking to her, I was like, you must feel amazing. Like you're doing good. You're doing real good. And she said, you'd think that, but because you're working on such a micro scale that she's like, I honestly took this job thinking, you know, I'm going to come home every day feeling amazing. Like I'm really making a difference. Superhero. But, yeah. But you don't feel like <laughs> you just feel like, am I making any difference? This is so like the, the problems only seem bigger because you're seeing them close up. Right. <clears throat> But um, all of that said is she invited me to a fundraiser for one of these candidates that she believes in for Mm. the California State Assembly. And um, a thing that I've been doing recently, and I don't know if you can relate or not, anytime I'm like sent an email for an invitation to anything, Mm -hmm. my immediate reaction is like, no, (laughs) like, Like, I don't know why it like fills me with such anxiety, um, in a way where I can't even uh, absorb the information. And, um, but then I, I reread it and I was like, this is something I want to do. And, and I want to go and support her. And it's, it's very little investment. You know, it's just like going to this, outdoor bar and listening to the guy talk and and pay you know twenty dollars so that I'm contributing to his campaign and um not feel like I'm not doing nothing. So I went and wait sorry uh, you don't want to not feel like you're not doing nothing <laughs> we need a chart <laughs> <laughs> you hear about Tucker Carlson's balls he's tanning him <laughs> but you know what I'm saying like yeah, I, I, I think I think if I didn't even go to that, I'd be like, I'd really be filled with self-loathing of mm-hmm. like, you piece of shit. You can't even go to like. All you had to do was show up. Right. Yeah. Um, so I went and I took Abby with me and um, and it was really Wait, nice. Abby, uh, Abby cast any spells while she was there. <laughs> no. She flying on, no. a, flying on mean, a broomstick, maybe. <laughs> not that I saw. Not that I saw, but um, what was I going to say about all of that? Um, yeah, and I got to meet the actual candidate. He is not running for a district that I'm in, but she just knows that I kind of care about this kind yeah, of yeah. stuff and that I could tell people that also care. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it also was inspiring, like talking to people who care that much. She knows him from working with the homelessness, the candidate. And she's like, if you think that I work hard and care, like it's, he's insane. Like in the sense that right. there's cases that are so hard and and most people would be like, okay, I'll get your phone number and I'll check back with you in a week. But he right. is like, he like stays on it. He, like he, he'll stay late. He'll make sure things. Are- is he already an elected official? Is he already a state? He's, not. he's, he's not. not. He's an astrophysicist uh, by trade now. And and that was the other point they made is, is they said that there are city council members and state assembly members that are well-intentioned, but they aren't on the front lines. So they may push policies with, again, the intention to help homelessness, to help housing, mm-hmm. but they don't see like the specific problems and hurdles that people are going through. Um so and so his whole thing is affordable housing because he thinks that that is this nexus of um you know like the wealth gap could kind of be fixed with affordable housing homelessness could be fixed with affordable housing um there's a lot tied in with racism and homophobia because he's like you could ask Tamara the the largest percentage of people we talk to are black trans women who are like the cross section of the most um, marginalized communities. And mm-hmm. I don't know, it, all of this t- said, I don't know what I want to do or, or where or how, but yeah. it was inspiring in the sense that like, I just kind of do my job 
and I go for walks and I watch TV and it's like, maybe I should be physically doing something to yeah. try to make the world a better place, whatever that means. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't say that I do a whole lot except complain myself, you know, I mean, I make, I, I gotta, I make, I make, financial donations once in a while but you know who gives a shit uh that's not putting your ass on on the line well and um, i i again i'm not bringing any of this up as like a no, no no i'm not and i'm not yeah yeah no no, no i'm not taking i'm not taking that it's just making me think about that you know yeah. it's making me think about like because the it's funny i was talking to one of my brothers yesterday just about how fucking dire everything in the world is right now you know uh politically in this country you know there is a group of people i won't even call them a political party there's a group of people who want to institute an authoritarian and possibly right. fascist government in place of democracy because they don't think democracy works for them and some of them are very confused and don't understand because they're being deluded by disinformation purposely perpetrated by the people in charge and then there are the people in charge who are doing that to take advantage of people's ignorance and you know use that for their own purposes um and we know i mean i don't know this for a fact but certainly the prognostications are that the Republican Party is going to destroy the Democrats in the 2022 election. And there's a good chance that they will win the 2024 presidential election, which means a minority of the population will control the country for an extended period of time. A uh, minority with an agenda that has nothing to do with helping anybody or making anybody's lives better or uh, the environment fixing anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just has to do with maintaining power, maintaining control, and maintaining wealth among a small, relatively small group of people. Um, and then, and then you go, but at least the rest of the world. Oh wait, no, not the you know. No, it's, uh, it's there's all kinds of other shit going on. Sweeping um, the world. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so anyway, I, I I am you know, and we've been talking about this for years, but but it does make me think of like what, cause I, I do think about that stuff. And of course I haven't taken any steps, but it's like, what are the things I could do that I would be able to do on a long-term basis right. and, and, and figure and, out? You know? And I think that would serve multiple things. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm talking to myself as well, but one, the obvious, like actually helping and making a difference and making mm -hmm. the world better. But I think too, for mental health, like, I feel like you're going to you're going to instantly feel less hopeless if you're at least taking action instead of just sitting around talking about how hopeless it is. You know what I mean? First of all, I feel attacked by what you just said because you spoke <laughs> about my mental health being better. Um second of all, <laughs> clearly was like oh my god. Second of all, oh, me. <laughs> second of all, I think you're absolutely right, but also it's funny that you started by saying you started all this by saying Tamara doesn't feel that way because of the stuff she's doing. I know, doing. I know, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's no winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But, but, but at least it feels like, you know. But she's still doing it. What I mean right, is that you're she's doing still, like, something. Yeah. What I mean is it doesn't make her feel so hopeless that she's like, there's like, why bother? Right, right. It's just not making her feel like Captain America. Right. Um, which I don't know if you saw Civil Wars, but you know I didn't. No. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> um, have you seen Civil Wars versus Aliens? It's amazing. <laughs> like those are two things that don't Wait. go together. So is that like a three-sided war? At that point? No, no, it's crazy. <laughs> it's an actual war versus uh -huh. a group of people. Oh, In other words, a war they versus show aliens. up. Uh -huh. No, no, no. It's it's. It's no, not, I know. It's, it's a war. they're fighting and it's like, fight. who can attract more attention? The war, the civil war 
Oh, or the a, aliens. It's a pop, like, popularity contest. It ends with a karaoke off. Oh, fun. Between it's like the aliens and the war. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just was watching Miss Congeniality. Oh, really? First of all, I think, and I'm not, I'm, I don't mean to get off topic here because I do think that, that stuff was interesting, but it literally was just on five minutes before I started talking to you. And I have, I, again, I don't think we talked about this, but I again, watch an entire romantic comedy, uh, rom-com, a rom-com. It's a, it's a Colin. <laughs> <laughs> was called cowboys versus rom-com <laughs> and uh harry versus it, aliens. <laughs> it was <laughs> when harry met aliens uh when are, are you writing this down I mean, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the metropolitan opera house is proud once again to welcome for the 17th sold out night in a row um but uh it was, a, it, I think it was called The Assistant. Do you know that one? With it was Sandra Bullock and uh, was it Sandra Bullock? I think it was, yeah. And Hugh Grant? Mm-mm, no, uh, no, that is The Assistant with Hugh Grant. No, this one, fuck, what was it I called? I don't think it was, it was The Assistant. I think it's like, it was with Ryan Reynolds. And he oh, was, oh, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, he, he lives up in, he comes from like Alaska and they go up to visit his family in Alaska and they hate each other they well of course they hate each other because rom-coms are always because it's driving me crazy yeah yeah yeah. um but anyway the point i was going to make is i feel like we should do a regular segment about rom-coms because there's always something in there that i'm like who the fuck thought that was a good idea and in that movie Uh i don't know if you remember this Mm -hmm. but i don't it's called the proposal (laughs) <laughs> the proposal, right, right, right. And I don't remember it. I don't know if I even saw it. Right. And she's <laughs> like, she's like a super successful editor in New York, but she's been so successful that she hasn't had time to have a man in her life. And, and she blah, like blah. can't get promoted until Who she's married fuck? or something. No, she's Which she's also- Canadian. She's being deported uh, until so that's why they have to have the that proposal. Makes a little bit more sense. Because I was like, yeah. just sue them for not promoting you. <laughs> right. No, no, no. She's like, what are we she's, they're about? like, they're like, you are gonna be deported and you can't return for five years because of your green card status or whatever it is and so she ends up saying oh no my, my ryan reynolds and i are getting married and everybody's like hey, ryan reynolds are you crazy that's your assistant that you shit on all day every day and she's like no no no. but it's ryan i mean he's charming and Have funny and hilarious it? and handsome <laughs> yeah yeah um but there's a scene in that movie where so so it turns out he is not just some loser who works as an assistant he that's- is that's shocking. From a very wealthy family up in Alaska, like on an <laughs> island in Alaska. <laughs> no, so, there's actually something interesting about me. My family comes from money. Like, right. that's actually not interesting. And, his, and of course, his father is like, I can't believe you didn't go into the family business, son. What is it with this editing bullshit? You know? And he's like, Dad, you don't understand me. I'm Ryan Reynolds. I was in the Mickey Mouse Club. And uh, I don't think he was. I think he was. No, that was, was that was um Ryan. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Um drive. Gosling. Yes, that was Ryan Gosling. Okay. So I was in Deadpool. <laughs> was that Ryan yeah, Reynolds? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in he Deadpool. He was in two guys, a girl in a pizza place. Right, That's right, right. Um, um ironically, he is Canadian. <laughs> oh, that makes that adds a whole other level to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Like just uh, switch the. I'm I'm writing this down. When <laughs> when Canadians met con- comedians, um, but uh, anyway, they go up there. They've li- you know his family has lived in Alaska all these years. There is Native American ancestry in his family. His grandmother Betty White, the the late great Betty White, has Native American blood. As it turns out. Mm-hmm. Which means at a certain point in the movie, Sandra Bullock, through a bizarre confluence of events. Oh, believe me, you have no idea. 
but through a bizarre confluence of events, she and Ryan Reynolds are sharing a bedroom together. And like she, I don't even know. It was a very like slapsticky thing where she comes out of the shower and she's naked and the dog steals her towel and she trips and falls and he's naked and she or he just came in from a run and took his shirt off so she falls on top of him and they're both it's like like disgusting you're disgusting your naked body you movie star yeah yeah like empirically like you i don't insanely care yeah yeah like, you insanely gorgeous people. and so she's like oh i'm getting dressed to shake this off this weird experience i just had of of being with somebody who used to be not in the mickey mouse club <laughs> and she goes into the she hops on a bike and rides into the woods did she put on clothes first <laughs> she did she got dressed she put okay, on her biking it. outfit she rides into the woods and like in the distance I'm she so... hears she hears like no, loom. No. No, uh, no. Uh, 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 no, no, and no, she no. goes, and Betty White is just in a no. clearing with no. a campfire, dancing no. around, doing like a Native American. I mean, who knows what it really was, I'm but ostensibly sh- doing a Native American dance of some sort to like just that's how she gets going in the morning, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is what I say. I'm like, holy shit, who... How did this happen? Who okayed this? Sandra Bullock. No, 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 no. Just wait. <laughs> is like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were... I didn't... I mean, and, and Betty White is like, come on, darling, give it a try. <laughs> and Sandra Bullock's like, I'm too uptight. I'm a... I'm an editor who's never had a boyfriend because I've been too focused on my work. There's no way I can do something like dance around a campfire. Notice that I'm one of the most gorgeous people yeah, yeah, that ever yeah. existed. <laughs> well, we'll come back to Miss Congeniality in a second. But uh, so she so she starts dancing around the fire. She's like very reluctantly dancing around the fire and slowly starts to get into it. And not only that, but what she ends up doing is not a Native American prayer of any kind. She... <laughs> She starts singing. This is where it comes full circle from the window to the wall. <laughs> let the sweat drip down my balls. Skeet, 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 skeet. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? It was crazy. And do you have it in front of you? What year was that? Was it like 2011 oh, or something? Let me see. It but, was too late. It was. It yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like that was a clearly a big set piece of comedy in the movie you know like this brilliant scene where she does i mean who who was that was that little john or or i don't remember who sang that song i um it's 2009 2009 okay year anyway i was just i i was i was blown away i was like this is incredible i can't get enough of it directed by a woman it doesn't happen very much. Good job. Yeah, well, that's why it was a piece of shit. Oh my god! No, 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 no. no. Um, but anyway, I, I do, I, 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 for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe, maybe part of it is like, <laughs> maybe, maybe part of it is like I would like a little romance in my life because yeah. I've been living by myself for two years. So, but whatever. So I, you know, at this point, I mean, that was the second time where I was just flipping through the channels and I was like, oh, what's this? And then I just could not, it was like watching a car crash on a high wire. Like I could not attractive people (laughs) turn away. I was like, holy shit. This is incredible. I also think there's a level of with the world being in the situation that it is Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of tv shows and movies and and books that are great but are kind of intense or have like an unhappy ending and with a rom-com it's it's like it's It's gonna work out it's comfort food like it's like a blanket wrapped around you right like at one point it looks like things are not going to work out and betty white who was probably i don't know at least in her 90s by then if not her 120s <laughs> she, 2009 she could have been 120 something by then um but by the way she was in the original cowboys versus aliens she was literally one of the cowboys oh 
<laughs> she played herself. <laughs> <laughs> but she oh so it looks like things aren't going well like like the father no, is like and the, they're mad at each other yeah and well they're, and they're the, gonna do the wedding they they should uh, they did the proposal and did the, so, so they're the like deal's do the, off well they're like to do the wedding here because you're here and we're not going to be able to see you again because we never see you because you live in new york and we're from alaska and there's no way to just get back well, and forth between and those we two have places so much especially money. if you're rich yeah <laughs> Like, like our cash weighs us down. We cannot get on the plane with this. Much. Well, they're, we store our money in our shoes. <laughs> so, so they go, they're going through with the, they're at the, they're at the thing. There's also a very like, just weird thing where there's one Latinx guy who lives on the Island and he's like the stripper and the postman and the, and everybody's like, ooh, who's this guy? You know, it's, it's crazy. But, oh, and then he's the minister at the wedding. Like, he's the, you know. But you have to have a third one or else it's not good. Right, right. Uh, so they're about, to, they're about to get married. And then Sandra Bullock, uh, who can remember? But I think Sandra Bullock just goes, I'm sorry. I have to tell you guys, this is a lie. It's a lie. Your son is being nice to me. And I don't want to wreck everybody's family. And I blah, 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 blah. And everybody's like, what a nasty person they all hiss yeah, at her. I'll never forgive you. Yeah. And then uh Betty White, who you know was in the original uh <laughs> Romans versus Greeks. <laughs> she she has a heart attack. She has a, oh, she's like oh, she's no. like I, I I mean she was doing a lot of dance. She was still very aerobic. She was dancing around the fire, but she, you know, she she has a heart attack, and everybody's like, "Oh God!" They call the plane. They get on the plane. They're so they're they on the plane. Get on planes. <laughs> they had to take their shoes off, which is coincidence, but that's where they kept their money, so they were able to get on. Thank God for the TSA. So they go. <laughs> oh no, sorry, it was a helicopter, not a plane, because they're rich. So they get on the helicopter, the emergency helicopter. They're flying away and, you know, whatever it is, it comes out. It's like, oh, dad, you're this. Mom, you're this. Sandra Bullock, you're this. Ryan, you're this. Whatever. What do you mean? <laughs> like, like one. we're going to work it out. We're going to figure uh, it out. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure this out. We're actually listening to each other and getting on the same page. Right. And then Betty White goes, okay, can I get up now? Like, she faked the whole thing to get the family to pay attention to each other. And then like they you could just say pay attention to each other. And then they come whatever. then they land. There's a whole thing where his friend is in the in the the tower at the airport and he's like, You gotta stop the plane because Sandra Bullock is gonna get on the plane to go back to New York. And he's like, You gotta stop the plane, you can't. And uh whatever. And Betty this White is, is like action <laughs> Betty White is like, You gotta go after her. And he's like, What are you talking about? She's like you love her. You love her. You do. You clearly love her. You guys you are in love. love. You know, like, yeah. Uh, anyway, it was just so it's hilarious to me because you're right. It does. It is going to work out. And it is funny how they have to go through all these weird permutations of like this and that. Now, this brings me back to where we started, which was Miss Congeniality. Which I only <laughs> saw for. In, by the way, <laughs> this is not even it's checking just in yet. Describing Sandra Bullock movies. <laughs> but here was what I loved about the thing I saw today. <laughs> thing with Sandra Bullock because what book, you have a thing with Sandra Bullock because you kind of did this with the Blind Side as well. Absolutely, I'm obsessed with Sandra Bullock. Okay. Um. Miss well, but she's that. in every fucking rom com for like 20 years. You know, in she's addition coming- to winning an Oscar for that piece of shit the blind side she's america's sweetheart but uh anyway she oh so miss congeniality so and i didn't know right away and so anyway here's a whole other part of this which is that i have just recently really started listening to this this will be my checking in i'm not going to check in with anything besides this just recently started listening to this band called lawrence Oh, you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. And I did know them from TikTok. I just didn't know. Oh, them. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that song is incredible. They're 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 good. They're fun. They're 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 I just enjoy their aesthetic and their music and whatever. And uh and I saw a thing of them on TikTok. So I think the kid, the girl's a great singer, but I think the boy is very much the sort of musical genius driving force behind everything. And 
they had a clip on TikTok of the two of them when he was like five and she was like three. Oh, are they siblings? They're, they're brother and sister. Yeah. I don't know. What, what is it? What is a sibling? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very Phineas and Billie Eilish. Uh, I don't know that reference, but yeah. It is. Uh, <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> when Phineas met Billie. Um, it's her big brother and he produces all her music. Right. But, but so anyway, it's the two of them and they're little, little kids and she's singing and he's playing the piano and the song that they're doing is the theme song for the pageant in Miss Congeniality. Whoa. Which it turns out he wrote when he was five years old. His no. father wrote the screenplay for, or actually it's both of their father. They have the same, they're related, they're brother <laughs> and sister. <laughs> their father wrote the screenplay for Miss Congeniality. He wrote the song in Miss Congeniality when he was five years old. Yes. And so they had, they, they were like, we need a song. I don't know if it was like a contest or something, whatever it was, his song was chosen as the theme song for that's insane. the pageant when he was five years old. And he then became the youngest member of whatever it is, the songwriters guild or whatever, when he was, when he was five years old. But anyway, so Miss Congeniality was on just now. And I didn't even realize what it was at first. It was a bunch of people standing around a computer looking at almost like a weird science thing where they were taking photos of one person and putting clothes on them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and clearly the scene, as it turns out, is the scene where all the FBI agents are sitting around going, who can we get to go undercover into this pageant? Here's what Danny would look like in a pageant dress. Here's what Fred would look like in a pageant dress. And they're all they all think of Sandra Bullock as hideous because she like wears Hilarious. a messy she, she, ponytail she, she, or something. Right. She's, she's, she's a messy <laughs> ponytail and she's kind of being like, almost like she's she's on on some kind of drugs or something. Like she's like, oh, guys, no. I, I can't do this. I'm not that. This is not who I am. <laughs> so, so. They so they're all so there's like a huge we group. Even, we can't even picture you being right, right. Beautiful. So 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 they so they, you know how it is in the FBI. Everybody like mm-hmm. like 25 FBI agents will all huddle around one person's computer mm-hmm. just because they're making like weird uh, photos of people. Right. So they do Benjamin Bratt and they do somebody else, and then Benjamin Bratt, who is of course very cockily eating a uh, a lollipop the entire time because that's what makes him cool. He's like. I got one for you guys. I got one. Check this out. And I'm like, oh <laughs> boy, here it comes. Anymore, so yeah, I go, I, I'm like, oh boy, here it comes. This is going to be a, this is immediately what I said to myself. This is going to be a, he's right behind me, isn't he? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so he uh, uh, pulls up a picture of Ernie Hudson and like, you know, does all the things and all of a sudden Ernie Hudson. And then you just see everybody in the background fading away. They're all disappearing. And he goes, look at this, guys, look at this. And it's Ernie Hudson in a in a dress. And he just sits there and you see Ernie Hudson come up behind him. And he literally says, he's right. Behind he's me. right behind me, isn't he? And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, like they <laughs> literally used that exact. It was so funny. And that's when the next one they do is they do Sandra Bullock and everybody goes, Oh, whoa, whoa, look at that. And she's like, she's like, off. <laughs> she's like, she's like, you know, you might want to take a good look at that because you've never seen that again. Oh, no way. Oh, uh. <laughs> Turned out they did see that again, apparently. And she's like klutzy too, right? Isn't that a thing? I think that is. If I remember correctly, and again, I haven't seen this in a long time, but I re- if I remember correctly, she does have to go through some kind of physical training to oh, be yeah. less, less klutzy she has in to that. Be, yeah. She has to be made over. People are like, you're unrecognizable. I'm like, they took down her ponytail. Like, everyone calmed down. And she started talking like a normal person. <laughs> oh, I got to get back to my FBI work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go do some filing and see. <laughs> Are you guys going out for drinks after work? Because I'm going to be lonely because I'm such a loser. It's like Bill Murray and Caddy Shack. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So next week, for next week, we got to watch something. 
Okay, but we've said this before, and I've done the homework, and you have it for the record. I'll we'll have to too. we'll have to have like a text reminder. Right, right. This is going to be a tough week. I have to give a speech next Saturday, so I have to mem- I have to write it and memorize it by next Saturday. On what? I don't even want to get into it, but let's okay. just say it's a very <laughs> Sorry, specific <I> <laughs> subject, and I have to do it, and I should have it memorized by now and i don't but uh, it'll be fine it'll be fine um okay let's do parting shots shall we mm-hmm. starting with amber go yeah i um i've done a couple errands <laughs> this is so lame but i've done a couple errands lately that fill me with pride that I did them because in my head, they were so hard. They were so impossible. Um, I have this wedding coming up in a couple weeks and there was an outfit I ordered online and it didn't work and I didn't have any way to mail it back. So I had to return it in person. Ugh, I hate that. And I did it, Sean. Cause like part of me was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But am I like Mm -hmm. I've met you before? (laughs) I have stuff here now that's like I got it in the mail. It doesn't fit right. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm stuck with this piece of shit, you know, but I like went to the like I drove. I parked. I Mm -hmm. walked to the store. I did the whole thing. And it's it's so funny because it was not that difficult. So, like, what is the disconnect between why do we think it's that difficult? I think it's Newton's second law. Okay. Oh, inertia. Yeah. Objects in motion tend to remain in motion. Objects at rest tend to remain at rest. So if you're at rest, you're like, I can't, I can't do, do it. Yeah. It's like, what's the catalyst? What's going to get you going? You know? Um, Cause that happens to me all the time. And then I'm like, why the fuck didn't I just do that to begin with? Totally. You know? Oh, between returning that driving to West Hollywood for Tamara's um, event. Mm-hmm. And then, um, the dress that I did get for the wedding that I might not wear anyway, but it's, it's, I'm a very short person and it's very long. So I was like, I need to get it hemmed. I- Have you thought about stilts mm, on the beach? <laughs> I mean, you think it's crazy, but rather than stilts, what about buckets upside down? Okay. And you know, you're holding the strings. In them. <laughs> um, so I, and I took it to a place to today for them to hem it a little bit. And again, between those three things, it's it's actually obscene how proud of myself I am. I'm like, I could do anything. We're in the grand scheme of things. Those are very, very minute. Yeah, I agree. But I also feel like it's <laughs> that's the time we're living in right now where it's like <laughs> anything you do right. is really outside your comfort zone. Right. You know? which is basically the, the confines of your apartment. Right. Absolutely. Um, so doing something is spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and it's one of those things I, I I'm still doing morning pages and I was mm-hmm. so sick of every entry. It was like, I gotta go get that tailored. I gotta go get that tailored. So I'm just excited. But that's the point of the morning pages is that it becomes a thing where you're like, I can't write this one more time. Right. You right. Know? So I'm excited that tomorrow I could be like, guess what pages? <laughs> <laughs> Hi beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess that's, that's my parting shot. <laughs> Aaron's are hard, but then when you do them, you feel really good but i also have the like well like i've accomplished enough for a lifetime are you kidding me like i never right. have to do anything ever again total self-satisfaction mm-hmm. um i here's my parting shot it's not great um i went to a wedding did i talk about the wedding i went to no i went to a wedding a couple of weeks ago And it was for somebody that I know out here. Beautiful place out in the Santa Monica Mountains. Ooh. Um, I did not. I knew going that I would not know anyone there. Like I knew. I knew 
the I, bride. And I was going to say, I'm guessing you know at least one person. <laughs> right. <laughs> she was busy. Um, they, they invited you as a prank. <laughs> right. But, you know, I'm... <laughs> talked about this before that is not something i enjoy mm. doing you know i've missed it's i've missed weddings before yeah. yeah uh even where i knew i was going <laughs> to know people <laughs> i've still missed weddings before uh but i kind of forced myself to mm. go it felt it feels very similar to my partner shot of just it like, really does yeah and i got there and I'm just not going to like the ceremony was very nice. I'm not the person who's just going to go up to people and be like, Hey, what's going on? How do you guys know the bride? I'm, this is where I know her from. I'm good. What are you guys doing here? What do you do? Where are you from? How's your thing? Did you know that you don't have to use that voice? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm not the one who's going to go up to people and be like, oh, I'm Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Nobody likes me because I'm a weird nerd and I have a ponytail. <laughs> what a loser I am. Uh, oh, yeah, that's me in a bathing suit. Get a good look because you've never seen that again. Ugh. The software could tell what she would look like in a bathing suit. I think that was I didn't see the beginning <laughs> of the scene, but I would assume that that was the point of the of the of the scene was like this software can predict what someone will look like underneath their clothes. That's insane. Um, yeah. <laughs> but. But anyway, so I went and I, and I, and, 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 you know, the, the tables were all set up on the other side of the vineyard and the ceremony was on this side of the vineyard. And then there was like little bar tables just out by the, by the, um, by where the ceremony was. And I was like, like a, like I, I'm, a cocktail hour situation. Right. And I was like, I'm just going to go sit at one of these tables. Cause I just, I I'm, 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 I don't have it in me. Yeah. I, and I didn't feel bad about it. I was like, I, I'm not going to, I don't feel weird about just sitting there because this is, I don't know anybody here and I'm not, you know. And uh, so I went and I sat at this table and like two seconds later, this photographer comes strolling along and he's like, Oh man, you look so fucking cool. Do you mind if I take a few shots? And I was like, <laughs> All McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm about to go do a show in Spokane, Washington. But do you mind if I first take a couple of pictures of you, lad? Um, no, I didn't do it justice. But he, I think he was Scottish, and uh, and I was like, "This is my nightmare." And he took a bunch of pictures. I, I, in my head, all of like most of the wedding photos when when the bride and groom get them back are of you. But here's the thing. There were two other photographers, and within four minutes, both of them also came Why? over and started taking pictures. Why? I was like, "What are you guys doing?" And they're like, ah, "Just, it's a cool shot. It looks Maybe interesting." Maybe like the sun was setting or something. No, no, because <laughs> because I said no. I said to my friend a couple of days later, I was like, "Just so you know, there's going to be a million photos." So she sent me one of them, and I have it. And is it cool? It does look fucking cool. Uh, no, it, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I was it, like, oh, see? <laughs> no, no, no. No, but what it does do is it makes, it just makes me realize, like, just being confronted with my own physical form was disheartening in that moment, you know, of like, oh, God, I got to fucking get on the treadmill. You know what I mean? Like. It, 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 you know, and I, and I have been, I, I have been exercising a lot, but I guess I've also been eating a lot. <laughs> Dinner because, at 2 a.m. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I was like, holy shit. Like I, you know, I knew that I was, that I was, could stand to lose a few pounds, but when you're confronted with the image of it it's just yeah. like holy shit anyway it turned out that i did know a couple of people there i'd only met them like once or twice through um the the bride but the, i found them like at, at a certain point i was like i'm just gonna go walk around the bar and i went in and one of those people was there so we started talking and i met her husband and then i sat at a table and there was a guy sitting next to me because 
you know, it was one of those things where they gave everybody a table assignment. Like you had to sit in a specific seat and you couldn't leave. You could, I didn't <laughs> you really understand, but I was like, I couldn't get up at some point. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's so much money in your shoes. So, right. <laughs> but the guy I was sitting next to was a nice guy, a manager, a manager out here, which is a very specific personality type. And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, managers are basically salesmen. That's why that's, that's the personality exactly type. Exactly what like, it is. Yeah. He's like, hey, blah, 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 you know, and like <laughs> when I, when he realized that I was being funny in ways that he did not he perceive. He was like, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to say that, but he was like very taken aback because he was like, I'm the alpha here. What's going on? Why is this uh, guy? Why is this guy making jokes that I'm not even thinking of? I'm the guy who jokes. Weird. And it worked out fine. Like he he didn't, it just took him a minute. Like I could see him going like, hold huh. on, what's happening right now? <laughs> I'm the one who does the thing about Tucker Carlson's balls. Being oh, God. <laughs> um, Have you seen Cowboys <laughs> versus Aliens? <laughs> right. But, uh, but anyway, it was just funny to, to be in that situation. And I don't know. So I'll uh, I'll post that picture online. Take a good look because that's the last time you'll ever see that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's my parting shot. That's it. That's all I, I got. It. I feel like we we did it. We had a good I, I, but yeah. And the la- yeah, and that's the last thing I'll say is that I did feel a sense of accomplishment just for just, going and coming right. back. You know, I left long before the end of the night. I was like, I'm gonna drive back to Hollywood or whatever. And then it was funny because as I was coming down the driveway of this vineyard, stone cold sober, I was trying to program into the phone, like how to get home. And there's probably no even service there. There was actually, there wasn't in some, like in some spots when you were walking around, you didn't have it, but as I was coming down the driveway, it was fine. But the driveway was like a curving driveway. And at a certain point I looked up and I was literally this close to hitting the wall. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, that would have been, that would have been really bad. <laughs> That would have been really, really bad. That wouldn't have been good. Sir, step out of the car, please. No, no, no. I didn't. I haven't had anything to. No, I'm I'm okay. Yeah, right, sir. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so just get out and do stuff, folks. That's the message of today's episode. But be safe. Please be safe. Oh, well, that's a whole other issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a long shot. This has been the long shot. It is the long shit. Shh. <laughs> Freudian. <laughs> I think it was just a slip of the tongue. I don't think it was a Freudian slip. I think it was a Freudian shit of the tongue. <laughs> um, we'll see you next time on the long shot. take to the edges or learn how to steal but I don't want to be here that long and then maybe it seems like I'm asking myself for my own spare change but whether or not you're a snake in the grass all the bad times will come and the good ones won't last and the vitamin C disappears way